Hello everyone and welcome to a refill. It's great to see you. I'm Pastor Mag and today we are behind Crossroads Church. This is where we have our barbecue community. That's right. Every Wednesday till Labor Day, we are having barbecue with burgers and hanging out. It's a great place to be. Now you missed it. Yep. Today is not the day for barbecue community. That's okay. We'll be having it next Wednesday again at 6 p.m. Now we are in Psalm chapter 22 today and it's a long one. And not just is it a long one, one, it's pretty intense. So we're going to read it through and then we're going to talk about it here. And we might pause along the way to talk, but this has been a great, uh, great Psalm. Let's go ahead and get into it. We are in Psalm chapter 22. Let's, let's read. The Psalmist begins, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, my cry day by day. And you can hear that right now. We've got some sirens going past. Let's just pray real quick. Father, uh, we just pray for whoever is having the sirens come to them, Lord. We pray that you would take care of the situation, that you would be able to heal them quickly, and that you would be known. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we are in verse 2. Oh my God, I cry day by day, but you do not answer. And by night I find no rest. Have you ever had that? The psalmist is here. He's saying, help. I need help, God. And continues on. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you, they cried and were rescued. In you, they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm, not a man, scorned by mankind and despised by the people. All who, all who seek me, see me, mock me. They make mouths at me and wag their heads. He trusts in the Lord, yet let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me from the womb. You made me trust you at my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And from my mother's womb you have been my God. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. See, right here is really interesting. He says, basically, the difference between you, a.k.a. God, and me. The difference between God and us God and humanity. There's a difference. What is the difference in you, in God? Uh, the previous generations trusted him. In God, they cried and both times they were delivered. They were rescued, it says here. But he's saying here that he is a worm. The psalmist is saying, I'm a worm. And everyone is mocking him for trusting in God. Like Things have changed in the generations. He's talking about how God took him from uh, from birth and, and has been his God from the very beginning. Let's keep going. Many bulls encompass me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a rav uh, ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bo bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My strength is dried up like a pot shard and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You, you lay me in the dust of death. For dogs encompass me, and a company of evildoers encircle me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Right here the psalmist is saying, this is my problem. Here is going on. This is my problem. I need help. Okay, and so next he's going to go into his need. What does he need? We see his problem. What does he need from God? He continues, but you, Lord, do not be far off. O oh, you, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. You have rescued me from the horns of the wild, wild oxen. And now we're going to get to this end here. And he's talking about the result. What happened because he reached out to God? I will tell of you, of your name to my brothers in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All of you offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he has not despised or abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. And he has not hidden his face from him, but has heard when he cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all families of nations shall worship before you. For kingship belongs to the Lord, and he rules the nations. All the prosperous of the earth eat and worship. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, even the one who could not keep himself alive. 
prosperity shall serve him. It shall be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They shall come and proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done it. And that is what we end with. We take our needs to God. We take our fears to God. We take what's going on to God because he is what's important. And honestly, we want him to answer our prayers and he usually answers them how we want him to answer. He doesn't always, but he often does. Look back, what have you asked him for? We're not talking about the ridiculous, huge things. What is the things just every day? Did you pray about finding a parking spot that you found? Did you pray about having someone to talk to about Jesus? Have you, did you pray about a situation in your life? And what did he do? Did he show up? Maybe not how you wanted right away, but did he show up? I bet he did. God answers our prayers over and over and over, and yet we overlook. You see, when something bad goes on in our life, we blame God. And yet when something good happens, we call it luck or providence or a great situation or we worked really hard for it. For it. You know what? God is working time and time and time again. Let us, like the psalmist at the end here, praise him. You know, he is not abhorred or despise the affliction of the afflicted. When you are afflicted, he comes and comforts, he comes and helps, and he has not hidden his face from him, but is heard when he's cried out. You might not feel like it, but God hears you, God loves you, and God's looking out for you. And so let us come and proclaim the righteousness to a people yet unborn that he has done it. Let us continue to praise God and take his name out to the world. Let us, when we see that something God's done, let's glorify him. Let's be looking for what God's done. Hey, today was a long psalm and it's been great to break it down to you. I want to remind you, if this has been helpful, if this has been encouraging, would you hit that thumbs up? And if you really liked it, or if it's been helpful, hit that subscription button and the uh, bell icon on YouTube. That'll let you know what, every time we upload. If you're on Instagram, just hit that, uh, that heart button, share it around. The more people that see these kinds of things, uh, the more that the algorithm can know that it's great. And remember, we meet every Sunday on YouTube or in person at Christ or Crossroads Church, excuse me, at 1010 Mountain Time. I had someone ask what time zone is. It's Mountain Time. I really enjoy getting together with you guys. We'll see you later.